On Wednesday, many of us marked a day without a woman through an international women's strike. So this week, Off Kilter has an episode without Jeremy Slevin. Don't worry, he'll be back next week. But I'm thrilled to kick off this week's episode with Michelle Chen. She's a contributing writer to The Nation and also co-host of Descent's Belabored podcast. Michelle, thanks so much for joining the show. Thank you. So you wrote a piece in in really covering the women's strike this week that you titled, This is What Feminism Really Looks Like. And I want to actually borrow a quote from one of the people that you feature in the piece, um, a, uh, a trans worker who uh, spoke at one of the strikes and, and recently launched a union, spoke about the need for intersectional resistance instead of what you term establishment feminism. Um, and and this this woman uh, said in, in a quote that I, I find too good not to use, boss feminism is denial. It's deception. It is self-interest over solidarity. What did she mean by that? And and uh, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about uh, the end of establishment feminism as we saw in this strike. Um, yeah. Well, um, first of all, I, I don't think uh, we've seen the end of establishment feminism, but I think that is um, what people are sort of trying to um, orient themselves against, or at least um, uh, you know, change their analysis to be more wary of that going forward. I think for a long time, um, the discourse around feminism um, has uh, revolved around this uh, image of, um, you know, feminism as it upholds a capitalist establishment. Um, and I think what, um, what Octavia said in that quote was, um, emblematic of a kind of grassroots feminism that is sort of returning to the original working class roots of International, uh, Working Women's Day, uh, which was about, uh, labor and it was about, uh, women, um, and the dignity of labor and how those two go hand in hand. So, uh, rather than having a kind of feminism that uh, supports, um, you know, an overall patriarchy um, that is propped up by capitalism or capitalism that props up patriarchy, um, we're now seeing intersections of different marginalized communities uh, within the feminist movement um, that are more subversive, that are more willing to challenge the status quo. One of the intersections that was on display and and in droves at the women's strike this week was what you describe as the link between feminist success and racial justice. Help us understand what that looks like. Um, Well, I mean, you see it on a lot of fronts, uh, but I think that with the um, with the last administration, you you saw um, uh, an emerging kind of um, willingness to broach issues of racial and cultural difference that perhaps were kept under the lid before, um, you know, with uh, the presidency of, of Barack Obama, I, I think a lot of people had hoped that that would have been a breakthrough on race, um, much the same way that uh, many establishment feminists had hoped that Hillary would have been a breakthrough um, with, uh, you know, w- when everyone expected her election, um, uh, th- this past year. Um, and, and I think, uh, whether, you know, uh, the, the, the first effort, of course, was, was successful. Uh, and we got eight years of a Democratic presidency under Obama, um, at least nominally. Um, that's, you know, that was a success. Um, the second effort was not successful for various reasons. Um, many could say that those two, Subsequent events are tied together, but um, you know whether or not there was a you know a, a success on the political front. I think that fundamentally people were left unsatisfied with the um, conversations that were happening in status quo politics, um, both under Obama around race and as well as um, under um, the uh, the debate. Uh, surrounding the first American presidency that people have been hoping for, the the first American female president that we've been hoping for. So, um, and I think that between those two, there was kind of a disillusionment with what establishment politics could do for working people, because um, over the past eight years, one of the continual through lines has been, regardless of whether we're focusing on feminism or, uh, you know, anti-racism, in that very standard liberal Washington conversation that's going on, there is an underlying uh, current of unrest, of poverty, 
um, and a sort of economic pain that wasn't being addressed. Um, and I think that people got tired of, you know, the limitations of the liberal discourse. Um, and I think that's ultimately why we couldn't have a redo of 2008, you know. Um, we couldn't even have a redo of 2012. Um, I think people, you know, what, what political capital had been gained in 2008, and that's not to discount what it really meant for a lot of people, um, especially in my generation, um, I think a lot of that goodwill had been spent uh, by the time the eight years were up. And yes, there was a ton of energy around uh, people like Bernie Sanders. Um, but again, we saw that even within liberalism, that coalition was already starting to fray. Um, and people felt like what we often term identity politics had um, had come up short in terms of what it could do to unify people around issues facing everyday working people. Well, it'll be exciting to see where the momentum goes from here. The Women's March clearly was not a one-off, as these strikes showed. Um, And Michelle Chen, thank you so much for your coverage of these issues, particularly uh, intersectional uh, coverage that you you do so well. Um, And thank you so much for joining the show.